So guys, wanted to come back to you and talk to you about a little bit more about training and I think what I should prioritize and then what you should prioritize. So what is breath holding? You are essentially trying to hold your breath as long as possible. And the only real limiting factor to that is your oxygen levels. Of course, your oxygen levels aren't actually used to develop the urge to breathe. That comes from your CO2 levels. The higher they get, the more you have the urge to breathe, but they're connected, right? Like oxygen is used to buffer the CO2. So if your CO2 levels are rising, your oxygen levels are also going lower, especially towards the end. So oxygen is a limiting factor and I feel like from what I've seen, most people focus on CO2 training, right? You're trying to focus on getting more and more comfortable with that CO2 buildup, which makes sense because the more comfortable you are, the further you can de delay your contractions, the less oxygen you'll use burning up uh, by contracting and so on and so forth. But the number one thing is lung capacity. But I think there is a deeper layer there. Specifically, I'm actually going to pioneer a ratio of body weight to vital capacity. And I think that's a huge determining factor, right? Because if you're big and you have a bigger lung capacity, depending on your ratio, you probably won't be able to hold your breath as long with somebody that's much smaller, weighs a lot less, but has a smaller capacity. So I think body weight to vital capacity ratio is the number one determining factor when it comes to holding your breath. That's all that matters. So you gotta try to make your ratio as high as possible. So there's two ways to do that. The harder way would be to increase your lung capacity, which as I've talked about on my channel, certainly is possible, but think about it more like you're unlocking your full potential as opposed to really adding any uh, new gains. Losing weight's a big one, right? We can all lose weight, especially in this day and age. If your weight gets too low, obviously there are certain stressors on your hormones, especially for males. If you lose too much body fat, your testosterone production plummets, so you don't want to be there for an elevated period of time. But yeah, I think before I go, right now I weigh around 185 pounds and I've dropped about seven to eight pounds in the last month. And I'm probably now going to hover around here for a while. I don't want to go below 180. I already feel kind of small. But that certainly is going to add a lot of time to my breath hold because I'm lighter but I still have been maintaining my lung capacity. So obviously that ratio has improved. Therefore, it will be a good determining factor of my full potential. So yeah, weight, losing weight is probably the number one thing you can do. And then also I think adding in a lot of cardio, not only for the weight loss benefit, but also because when you perform a lot of cardio, your body gets better at utilizing oxygen. It's more efficient. That's what you want. You want the most efficient your body can be at utilizing oxygen. So I think cardio is actually probably one of the best trainings you should focus on when it comes to breath holding. Of course, you still need to practice your breath holding, but I only do between 30 minutes to an hour of breath hold practice a day, probably five times a week. I'm not as focused on it because I think the cardio and the weight loss and trying to increase my lung capacity is ultimately more important. There is an element to be said if you're comfortable holding your breath and that'll come with experience, but you can do things to further improve that, such as facing your fears, exposure therapy in a way. But yeah, so I think when it comes to training and when it comes to you know what you should focus on, Ultimately, I believe it all revolves around your oxygen levels. And so you wanna lower your weight. You wanna to try to unlock the most capacity you have in your lungs. 
You want to utilize your oxygen more efficiently. So that comes down to mainly focusing on cardio and then breath holding as um, a supplement to that actually. Of course, you can do little tricks to increase your breath holds, such as triggering the mammalian dive reflex, which uh, what I read online is cold face submersion in cold water, but you can also trigger it through breath holding. Um, and then mild hyperventilation. I know this is like a touchy topic because everyone in free diving is like, oh no, don't hyperventilate. Well, whatever. I'm not focusing. I'm not even getting into free diving. Uh, all my stuff is going to be static and dynamic apnea. In a pool, people are right there. I'm never going down depth. I'm going to hyperventilate to some regards. It makes the breath hold go longer. You constrict your blood vessels. You make yourself a little bit more numb. And you delay the contractions. I'm going to do it. I'm not saying I'm out here doing crazy hyperventilations. But, yeah, mild hyperventilation. And, you know, this is a journey, right? Like, I have one friend, kind of like a mentor, Static Apnea Blog, who's way more knowledgeable than I am, that I ask him questions on. But otherwise, I'm just figuring this out on my own, right? I've never taken a free diving course. I've never done any of that. And that's the beauty of it. It's, it's each of our journeys are our own. And you should have the confidence knowing that you believe in your capabilities and your uh, ability to dig and find new knowledge and new training techniques and what works for you. So don't focus so much on doing something just because other people tell you to. Find your own way to train, your own methodology, and what works for you. So this is a little bit about my philosophy and how I think I'm going to approach my breath holding. Just continuing to do tables. My favorite tables by far are forced exhale tables, right? Because think about it. If you break the breath hold into components, you have packing, you have, let's start, you have mild hyperventilation, then you got packing, then you go into the hold. On my best hold, 727, the first two minutes were pain. It was uncomfortable. I had so much air in my body that it was trying to escape through my nose, my mouth. It was just like, I felt so inflated that I was going to pop. So the first two minutes were just uncomfortable. But eventually, as you know, when you hold your breath, the pressure decreases and around the three and a half minute mark, I finally was like, all right, I can get into the re relaxation part of the breath hold. And that pushed me to like five minutes, five and a half minutes, no problem. So now I only had to deal with, you know, a two, two minutes, two and change of contractions. And so, yeah, why am I in training going to do a bunch of four to five minute holds? I mean, I will do them, but the, it's just wasted time. Personally, I think I'm going to practice packing. That's important. Get used to that feeling. So breaking into stages, first stage, I'm going to practice packing and practice my breath holding with packing. Feel that. Withstand the pain. Then I'm going to transition into a comfortable period. So that might be just tidal breathing, 70% inhale, hold your breath. Just feeling relaxed. Then you have the CO2 coming in. Well, if I'm going to practice CO2, I'm just going to do forced exhale tables because the CO2 comes right away, right? Not right away, but, you know, 30 seconds in. And so I'm not going to waste two minutes of nonsense to get to that point. I just want to get right into it right away. And I love that. And my body adapts quick. So I love CO forced exhale CO2 tables. Not even a CO2 table because uh, the, there's no time decrease or increase. It's just... Uh, similar repetitions and then of course at least some in the, something in the tank because this is a performance I remember in swimming I was a terrible in like in practice it can never go a good time but when the spotlight was on when I mentally prepared for it when I visualized my performance was me like a huge jump not min like minuscule, a huge jump. So I don't actually think you need to hit what time you're going for in training. I know right now I hit a seven and a half. I could easily hit eight minutes in a competition. Of course, there's performance anxiety. 
But if you visualize intensely months leading up to that, and you know how to mentally prepare the day of, you'll be fine. It just comes with experience and practice and knowing how to handle it. And it actually should improve your performance if you know how to tweak it correctly to benefit you and not hurt you. So I don't know what I'm gonna title this video. Maybe it's just Gorski's Reflections, part one, because there's a lot of stuff that I just said. But overall, right? Just to recap how I'm focusing on training, there's multitudes of layers, but one, it's losing weight, getting in better, better, better cardiovascular shape, increasing my lung capacity, increasing my ability to pack more and more. And then finally, figuring out how to somewhat improve my CO2 tolerance. But that shouldn't, I don't think that should be your main focus. I think there's other things that you should focus on first. And then the CO2 tolerance is the last bit. Breath holding should actually be what you should start focusing on once you optimize everything else. Have you optimized your diet? Are you in great shape? Have you lost weight? Do you have a low single digit body fat percentage? Well, no. I think anything under 10% would be extraordinary. And yeah, focus on that first and then only then should you really hone in on the actual breath holding component. Because all those things are I think gonna add way more to your final hold than just focusing on breath holding alone. I could be wrong, I'm new to this, but for my few followers that follow me, I like to be a dark horse, nobody knows about me, but I'm coming. And my goal is the US national record. I am highly confident that I will break that within the next year. And then I'll go from there. I'll see how far I wanna go down this rabbit hole, but I don't identify as a free diver. It's not my life. life livelihood. I identify with discipline and pushing myself. That's what I like. That's what I love. That's why I love breath holding. It's me versus me. And yeah, hopefully this was enlightening to a degree. You get a little bit insight into my mind, the way I think, how I'm approaching training. And leave some comments about what you want me to talk about. Is there anything that you would like me to address? And I will happily do it. So I will catch you guys in the next video.